Hey everybody, welcome to the session. My name is Kai Weiner from Confluent. Today I will show you a live demo for streaming IoT data with MQTT, Kafka and TensorFlow. So this is really an exciting demo where we connect to 100,000 simulated devices. So this is really a demo at large scale to show you what's possible and also how easy it is to set up. So we built this whole demo in around 15 to 20 man days and it's really pretty impressive because it's scalable, it's reliable. And so I'm really looking forward to show you this demo today. The idea is not to show you a lot of theory here. If you want to learn more about Kafka, machine learning and IoT, check out my other blog posts and videos, please. This focus is really on the demo. And here is the demo. The use case is a connected car infrastructure. We connect to 100,000 simulated cars, which connect to MQTT broker cluster of HiveMQ, and then ingest the data in real time into Kafka. Here then we do pre-processing the data, filtering, aggregations, and so on, in this case with KSQL. And then we ingest the data into TensorFlow. And the exciting part here is that this is really streaming ML with TensorFlow IO and its Kafka plugin. You can do machine learning from streaming Kafka data without the need of another data store like S3 or HTFS, which you would use typically. Here you directly stream the data into TensorFlow to train a model. And we train a model for anomaly detection or predictive maintenance based on the sensor data of the cars. And then we deploy this model to our Kafka client application where we do real-time predictions. And this is really also at scale for millions of messages. And all of this in a reliable and scalable way that you can even scale it up more easily. So this is the use case I want to show you today. I will demonstrate a GitHub project. So you can also go to this project and try this out by yourself. It's pretty straightforward. It takes only around 30 minutes to get started and it's just running a few commands and scripts. So you don't have to do much here. I want to say thank you to the main contributors to this project. Karsten from Confluent, Simon from HiveMQ and Jong, our TensorFlow expert from Mobile Iron. I have added a few roles here like software engineer and production engineer and data scientist. Um, all of these guys did several different things, but the point is that you really have to have an understanding of many different areas to build such a demo. And this is also to show how you can solve the impotence mismatch between the data science people, which love Python and Jupyter and notebooks and all these things, and they build the models. And on the other side, you have to build a reliable and scalable infrastructure to deploy the model ingestion, the model training, the deployment, the monitoring. And for that, you need to work together with the data scientists and the engineers and the production team. And that's what we did here. And in a few days, we built really an exciting demo, which I really would like you to try out by yourself and share your feedback with us. This is the architecture which I will demonstrate. So in our case, we use Kubernetes and we use that by intention. So we could also use a lot of managed services like Confluent Cloud, where we get a fully managed Kafka cluster. Or we could use the Google Cloud machine learning engine where you can host TensorFlow. In this case, we want to do more by ourselves for different reasons. We want to have it flexible to configure it by ourselves. We want to adapt it to new use cases easily and also show you what's running under the hood. And with this infrastructure, you can also run this on different clouds. Like we use Google Cloud Platform, but in a similar way, you can deploy this easily on Kubernetes in Amazon or in Alibaba or whatever, or even on premise and on hybrid scenarios. And then we have different components here. On the left side, you see the 100,000 clients, which we simulate, but it's really 100,000 clients, not just a few. And we have our Hive MQ cluster, which is scaling for the MQTT connectivity and ingesting the data into the Kafka cluster. And then in the Kafka cluster, we do the pre-processing with clients like KSQL, and then also the model training in a Python application with TensorFlow IO. And then we deploy the model into other applications, either another Python application or Kafka streams, or in the end, then really in the edge. So we use the TensorFlow Lite model and deploy it to the lightweight clients at the edge with a language like C, for example. This is our setup. We also leverage HiveMQ operator and Confluent operator. This is using the concept of Kubernetes of operators with custom resource definitions so that you don't have to manage your cluster. These operators provision it for you, they scale it for you, and they handle things like failover or rolling upgrades to a new version. So 
So it's pretty easy to set this up and use this by yourself. And just take a look at the configuration files to get more details. But it's really easy, even if you don't use our scripts, but that set this up in your infrastructure by yourself. With that, I want to now go to the demo and show you how this runs and how this looks like. First, here is the GitHub project. Um, this is really the full demo and you can run this with a few commands and check it out, all the code, the configuration by yourself. We have a lot of descriptions to discuss the use case, the architecture and the details. But the most important part probably for you is the quick start guide, because here we describe the requirements. And this is not really much. You just have to use a few command line interfaces like kubectl and Helm, Terraform and gcloud in our case. And that's it. If you have set this up, then you can start the whole infrastructure I just showed you with three or four commands. It's really that easy. So you just need to you configure Terraform here. You use it to provision all the infrastructure. And then when this is set up, which takes around 30 minutes on Google Cloud, depending on how many updates Google Cloud does. And then you can start a test generator, either in a Hello World evaluation example, where you have just 25 connections to see how it's running end to end in real time. But then you can also use the real script to do it at scale with 100,000 connections. And that's really it. That's the two, three commands. And then one last one um, where we deploy also the model training and model deployment. So this is by intention a separate task to, to do a separation of concerns and to show you different parts of the flow of the demo. So I have already started this here. Um, so I have started the Terraform scripts because that takes, as I said, half an hour. So now let's take a look at what's running right now. Here we are now in the HiveMQ control center where we see the infrastructure. And as you can see here, really, we connect to 100,000 devices. They produce around 10,000 messages per second. Um, this is not that much, but this is more or less realistic because a car doesn't send messages every second, but maybe every 10 seconds. But you can even scale this up much, much more, like to millions of messages per second with, with the same infrastructure here. It's pretty easy to do. And here you see we have five HiveMQ brokers for the scalability and high availability to connect to these 100,000 devices. And then you can also see here in this dashboard that we use the Kafka plugin from HiveMQ to ingest the data into our Kafka cluster. Like you see here, the Kafka cluster on the right side has three brokers in our case. So it's a pretty small cluster, but still can process many, many messages per second. What's also important here, um, we use the HiveMQ plugin here, but of course you could also use Kafka Connect and the MQTT connectors. There's always trade-offs of the specific connectivity between MQTT brokers and Kafka clusters. And there's a few trade-offs, but um, in the end they do the same thing. They integrate both clusters in real time and in both directions, that's also important. Not just ingesting data from devices into Kafka and its applications, but also the other way around like sending our alerts back to the mobile app or back to the car with MQTT. So this is the Hive MQ cluster, which is running here. And then we also have the Kafka cluster and here's Confluent Control Center to monitor that. Here you see also we don't have much throughput. It's around 10 megabyte per second, right? So even with these three Kafka brokers, you could probably process 100 or 150 megabyte per second. So it's pretty easy to scale this up even without adding new brokers to that. And now let's take a deeper look into that. We have here different Kafka topics where we get the data from the MQTT topics. This kind of mapping also from millions of MQTT topics to a few Kafka topics, that's also built into the tooling set, which we use here with HiveMQ and with Confluent. And you see, um, this is the sensor data. So this is actually the data from the 100,000 sensors. And we already ingested into a Kafka topic. Um, like you see here, this is sensor data. And it is what you expect. The data from the engines, from the motor of the cars. You see the key of the Kafka, of the uh, MQT topic, and then the, the, the different values of the sensors. And this is used for further applications. You can use any Kafka consumer to process the data in real time or in batch or in near real time. In our case, we want to focus on machine learning and train analytic models with that. So this is now important to understand the next part. We ingest all this into a Python consumer, which is using TensorFlow IO and Kafka under the hood, to directly stream this sensor data to the model training. 
actually for, before we do that we also use um, ksql to do pre-processing like filtering and transforming the data into another format like in this case um, we use afro format with the schema registry here so that we have a good structure also for model training and for other applications so actually what we are doing we are then consuming from this afro data and sending that into our model training in our case I have already um, trained the model because this takes some time. Let me just um, get here new tokens that I can show you the Kubernetes infrastructure to. Here you see now I'm going into the Kubernetes environment and here you see the overview. And if we go to the pods here in the default namespace, you see that now we here have a lot of device simulators which are running to simulate 100,000 cars. And we also already have done the model training because this takes around 30 minutes and it's still a small model. We trained an autoencoder here. So, but this Docker container, which you see, um, this got the data ingested from the IoT data in a streaming way in real time without another data store. And here we trained our model. So here is the log of this container. So here you see we are building an autoencoder. In this case, this is a neural network in an unsupervised learning mode which detects anomalies out of the sensor data so that we find out if motor engines will probably break soon so that we can send an alert in real time to the driver and its car to stop the engine and the car. And this is the model training. In our case here, um, we do the model training just once. So ideally you would retrain this of course, but we do it just once for demo. And then we store this model in Google Cloud Storage. So. A model is just a binary, right? So in TensorFlow, you use typically protobuf. And here we have our model file. This is a binary. It's trained now from historical sensor data. And then in the next step, we want to do predictions in real time based on that. And for that, I now manually start another Docker container. So here you see I'm in, in one of my projects folders here. Um, and in this case, I'm using the autoencoder. In another folder, we also have an LSTM network for supervised learning of the same data set. But here I use the autoencoder. And you can easily start the training in the predictions with the run script, but I here um, do it manually. And no worries, everything of this is described in the documentation and the quick start guide and so on. So we apply and use the file model predictions. Or maybe I just show you this file first. So um, let's model predictions. Here you see this is now a, a normal Kubernetes deployment, right? And this one is in this case getting the Docker container with the autoencoder. And under the hood, this is a Python application which is using TensorFlow IO, which we first used for training. But now um, we use the same. Let me just start this again. Kubectl apply minus f model predictions. So here I'm deploying a Python application. This is a new pod now starting. And so if we go back to the pods, um, what this Python application is doing, it's loading the model from our Google Cloud Store. So even the model loading is already automated, right? So, and if we now go to the um, pods, which we don't see here, so let me see why it's not working. I think I need to sign out and sign in again. That's a little bit unfortunate with this tool because you always have to get new tokens here. So we are logging in again. And now we see the pods. So and here now you see um, this is the pod which now already terminated. And this terminated pod um, has done model predictions. So if we go back to our Kafka topics and to the model predictions, this is where we are now getting new predictions from our Python client. This is using TensorFlow under the hood and does real-time predictions of the incoming data. And the Python application then is sending it to the model predictions Kafka topic. So here you see, this is the output of the TensorFlow model, which we process in real time for sensor events. And here you get different values. And the values are the prediction of the anomaly. And now another client, either a Kafka client could consume this. And for example, um, this could be a mobile app. Or you can send it back to the edge via MQTT because it's bidirectional. 
No matter if you use the HiFMQ plugin or the Kafka Connect connectors, you can send data back in real time to the specific car to show an alert here. And I think um, this is pretty cool. So um, let me show this demo to you now in a little bit more detail about what infrastructure is running here. This was um, what is running and now let's understand um, how is it actually running. So for that, um, we first go to the uh, to the HiveMQ namespace in Kubernetes. And here you see we have one operator at the bottom. That's the custom resource definition from HiveMQ running the infrastructure for HiveMQ. And we have five HiveMQ brokers running. And the same is true or similar for um, Confluent Kafka, where we have the operator. This is also a custom resource definition which provisions the whole Confluent cluster, including Zookeeper, Kafka brokers, KSQL for data processing, the schema registry, our control center, and so on. And th these operators for HiveMQ and Confluent, they are not just provisioning this stuff. That's the first part, but they're also running and operating it. So in case of failure, because if a pod is down or a cloud instance is down, it's restarting another pod and it's synchronizing everything automatically. So it's handling failure without data loss. It's also doing many other things like security configuration for your tokens and it's doing things like rolling upgrades for you from one version to the next version of Kafka or Confluent and many other things which are simply automated so that you don't have to do that by yourself. And that's why I said um, even if you don't have our scripts and you have to do that in your infrastructure with the Confluent operators it's pretty easy to do all of that with just a little bit of configuration. So, and under the hood, so it's, it's nothing special, right? We use um, config maps, secrets, we use stateful sets and replica sets, all the things you know from Kubernetes under the hood. So it's really all cloud native, what is deployed here. And with that, now let's go back to the next step, which is in the end that I want to show you also the um, IDE, where you show the, the project infrastructure a little bit. In the end, the important thing is really two parts. We have an infrastructure folder, and here we configured all the Terraform stuff to the stuff to deploy this. Like um, the main TF file, this is the one which starts all the other scripts. So you don't have to worry about that for getting started, but you can configure every small part for yourself. Create your own topics, your attention time, to build your own use case based on this infrastructure here. So I think that's really pretty cool. Um, you can configure everything, but it's straightforward to start all of that. And the uh, Terraform GCP and the uh, HiveMQ and Confluent create everything for you from the infrastructure. And then we also have a folder Python scripts um, where we have the LSTM and the autoencoder. And here you see um, we built Docker images for that already to deploy it in Kubernetes. But you can do all of that by yourself or use a script to run that. Or you can just use our YAML files to deploy the containers. So in this way, we have all automated or all configured manually so that you can adjust it. And so I think that's good uh, learning curve. First get started to show something and then configure it and adjust it and learn it by yourself and then build your own use case with that. So I think this is a pretty impressive demo, isn't it? So we connect to 100,000 cars and do real-time processing, machine learning, both training and deployment in real-time at scale all with just MQTT, Kafka, and TensorFlow. No other data lake or data store or other tools included here. So you can easily build that and scale that by yourself. At the end, I want to mention a few things which we didn't implement yet, so you didn't see it in this demo. Um, the demo is recorded on November 8 in 2019. So if you come back a few weeks later, you will probably see a few of these cool other things implemented, like um, sending alerts back to the um, cars or mobile apps via MQTT, so to have a real bidirectional communication in real time. And then we also want to show a few more IoT specific features, like a last will, which is very important um, if, for example, a car is not online anymore or a machine in your factory. I also want to definitely implement something like A-B testing with different models and different applications. For example, we might use a service mesh like Istio here. Um, that's probably the way I will go here in the future. And also very important, um, the deployment I showed you here of the models, this was also a Python application. And actually it was used, built using TensorFlow I.O. Um, you can do that for predictions, but what's not ideal here is um, this is more or less still an, a non-robust and non-scalable solution. It, 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 it's okay for these demos, but in the real world you might consider deploying your model in a real Kafka streaming application like Kafka Streams or KSQL. 
um, because that's much more robust and scalable because in our demo we have a Python script running it takes a batch of data does predictions in real time and sends it back to a Kafka topic and then the container stops and a new container starts again um, you could also scale that up into different pods but it's still not the same way like I have a real streaming application which runs 24 7 and there's always trade-offs and this is also a little bit the impedance mismatch between what a data scientist wants to deploy with Python and what a production engineer would build in the real world with maybe Java and, and an API like Kafka streams. But it's up to you and depending on the need for your scale and monitoring and so on. Today we also just train one model and deploy it. Um, in the future we will also show how to retrain that because that's pretty easy right now with this infrastructure. You can retrain and improve the model and then also update the client applications in real time. There are different options, like today we already use Google Cloud Storage to upload the new model then, and that the client application simply uses the new model dynamically. Or we have other use cases where you send new updates of the model, like the new model weights in a neural network, and send just the updates to a Kafka topic where the client application consumes it from. There, there's many different options. So for A-B testing, we could in parallel deploy different of these models then. That's pretty straightforward now to implement. So another part, as I mentioned, is that um, we don't use Ka Kafka as a service with Confluent Cloud by intention here to show you what you can do by yourself. In the real world, it might be good ideas that you don't even operate all of that and just use Confluent Cloud with the Confluent SLAs and consumption-based pricing to go and pay as you go. Um, you can start for $50 a month easily, even in production, and then you can scale up to several gigabytes per second throughput with one Confluent Cloud instance. And the last thing I want to see definitely is that we also deploy um, the model with TensorFlow Lite at the edge. So in this case, at a mobile app or in the car. It's also straightforward to do from now on and with this infrastructure. We then simply send the information via MQTT either to the device, to the car, or with MQTT and WebSockets to a mobile app and deploy our trained model, which we deploy at scale in the cloud and deploy the Lite model with just a few kilobytes or megabytes into a mobile app. This is the ideas which I had and which we and my team will implement next months. Um, but if you have any other ideas, let us know. And even better, you can also create PRs, right? So we are happy. Um, let us know. But even if you just want to try it out, please do so. It would be really great. With that, I'm done. I hope you learned a little bit about the combination of MQTT and Kafka and machine learning and how to do that at scale in a powerful way. And as I said, we did this in 15 to 20 man days, and we can also help you building these kind of infrastructures. It's pretty easy for getting started with a pilot, and then you can easily scale that up for real world production use cases. With that, thanks for watching. Please connect on LinkedIn or Twitter, and see you soon. Goodbye.